medicines um, like Lipitor, Crestor, or Zocor. Um, those coenzyme Q10 is a very good supplement because there's some small studies that show that statins deplete our natural levels of coenzyme Q10. So if you looking as to should I take coenzyme Q10, um, and at least if you're taking statins, that would be one one um, excellent patient population that would benefit from the coenzyme Q10. I think you all can see the screen now, and um, I'm going to talk about top tips for permanent weight loss. And just before I get into just some weight loss tips, I wanted to make uh, make us all aware of where we're at in America with our obesity trends. Um, and if you'll just look through, just briefly, I'm going to flash through about um, 20 years or so of obesity trends in America. And the kind of like a royal blue color is about 10 to 14 percent. So that represents, that color represents 10 to 14 percent of that state's population have an obesity. And this starts in 1985. Here's 1986. And then as we get to 1991, there's some states now that has 15% to 19% with obesity um, in the state. In 1997, there's some states now showing that 20% of the population in those states are ha um, have obesity. 2001, we have some states um, showing uh, greater than 25% of the population in that state with obesity. And um, now we, we hit 2005, 2006 with some states showing even greater than 30% of the state having obesity. So what are the statisticians estimating today? They're estimating the day when every United States citizen will be obese, unless we change what we're currently doing. And I will say the kids in um, grade schools and junior highs today are, are the kids that actually we will bury as adults. We will outlive them because of how they were raised and what they think is a normal, healthy diet. And we'll discuss some of that and what they should be eating and what we should be eating as role models for them. Um, and by the end of the presentation today, I'll actually give you some of the patient scenarios that I have, and you'll be able to critique their diets with me. Um, but first of all, not all fat cells are created equal. We actually thought at one time that fat cells were just storage depot. But the fat cells that are around our abdomen and around our waist, those cells are right near our vital organs. So our liver, our spleen, our, spleen, our heart, our kidneys, all of our organs are right there. And we have learned over the last several years that these cells are highly active. They work against us. Um, so not all fat cells are equal. Some fat cells are more dangerous than others. And the fat cells that are tucked in around our organs are highly, highly lethal. And in fact, um, we've got a new body composition analysis um, machine here at our wellness center. And what it does is it will do not only the percent of body fat throughout um, someone's body, and it's within 300 grams of precision. So it's a very precise body fat calculator. Um, but it also gives us the, or the amount of visceral fat that's tucked in deep beside the organs that's lethal. So even thin people might have some visceral fat. Um, because not all thin people eat healthy, right? Um, they can eat a lot of um, high-fat foods, and that might be what they live on. But the fat that's tucked in deep around our organs is, works very much against us. It's lethal. It leads to things like heart disease, diabetes, high blood pressure. And we want to make sure we get our waist circumference down and we get our visceral fat down for optimal health. This next slide, um, this is a uh, picture of with the yellow kind of, with the yellow does de deplict like chicken fat. And you can see there's a 100-pound difference in the individual on the left to the individual on the right. And you can definitely see that the yellow chicken fat around the organs is, um, is that's, that's the visceral fat that's in, somebody, in, in this person. And you can see it's pushing on the organs. And that's what all is working against um, the person is that kind of fat that's tucked right there in our, our um, abdominal cavity near our organs. And in fact, these are all the things that that fat secretes. Um, so angiotensinogen raises blood pressure. Free fatty acids and increasing insulin increases your risk for high cholesterol issues as well as type 2 diabetes. Um, the ones on the right bottom are all clotting markers, um, increasing your ability to have thrombosis or clots. Um, the left lower side, um, all these are, you know, work to, to 
um, have inflammation and increase your risk for heart disease. So inflammation is going to be asthma, arthritis, and inflammation. Um, so that's what those fat stores are doing. They're secreting all these chemicals that work against us. And what part of the body does it affect? It affects every organ in our body. So whether it's asthma or obstructive sleep apnea, um, and a lot of people don't realize how sleep apnea works with heart disease and works with obesity. That when we have a lot of, like a thick neck and a lot of pressure on our necks, um, so a lot of people with sleep apnea, if they have this big, thick neck and a lot of fat on their neck, um, they can't voluntarily breathe. So when they lay on their back, they start to snore or they stop breathing. That's why many people have to lay on their side and they quit snoring. But even when it gets more severe, even laying on their side, they be, have problems. Um, a normal person um, would, would go through all the stages of sleep and hit deep sleep and stay there you know, for about 20 to 30 minutes and recycle, and by the end of the night, they would have plenty of deep sleep. But for somebody that um, has sleep apnea, when they hit the deep sleep, the REM sleep, in 60 seconds, their oxygenation level in their blood would go down because the blood carries oxygen, so that would go down. Their arteries would constrict during that time, causing high blood pressure. And would say, hey, buddy, you better wake up and breathe because you're running out of oxygenated blood. And so even though that person doesn't necessarily open their eyes and wake up, they're always recycling. And every time they get to deep sleep, they're only there for about 60 seconds when they have to keep recycling to rebreathe. Um, and that's why they wake up, they feel disheveled, and they, they are tired and unrefreshed the minute they wake up for the day. You can often find these people on airplanes. They can't sit sedentary very long without falling asleep, so then the airplane snoring, nodding off. Um, but if you do snore at night, definitely get it checked out because if you do have sleep apnea, even if you treated it for a short period of time and then you lost your weight and then you didn't need it, that would be much, much more helpful to you and your health because you're preventing the hypertension that comes and goes when you have that and you're also um, giving yourself a little bit more energy because you're not getting deep sleep when you have sleep apnea. So when you get deep sleep, you'll have more energy to eat healthy and exercise and do the right things to get to where you need to be. Also, those fat cells. Um, in our abdomen, um, when it gets so fat, and we, we get non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So the fat, the, the liver processes carbs and sugars, and if we can't keep up with the carbs and sugars that our liver is processing, they adhere to the, the outside of the liver. We get a little inflammation. When the inflammation scars, we don't get that part back from the liver. Um, you know, it causes polycystic ovarian disease, causes osteoarthritis. So these fat cells that it's that secrete all these things that work against us. It's, it's hitting all these organs. Our skin can cause gout, stroke, cataracts, heart disease, hypertension, pancreatitis, some cancers. So what we really need to do is we really need to be potent about um, getting our weight under control because that's one of, one of the biggest risk factors. In fact, um, a body mass index is not always accurate. In fact, the taller you are or the shorter you are, the least accurate a body mass index is. So um, we want to, your waist circumference to be half your height in inches. So if you are 70 inches tall, we'd want your waist circumference to be 35 inches or less. And you measure the top of the hip bone to the top of the hip bone. And if you don't know where your hip bone is, um, if you just kind of press on your hip bone and lean kind of to the right side or the left side sideways, you'll, fi you'll find the top of the hip bone. And measure you know, what goes to the door first and uh, on top of the bo both hip bones, and that's your waist circumference. So now you know where you want to be. Um, your waist circumference should be half your height in inches. We know we've got to stop the trends that we're currently doing. We've got to set good, better examples for the kids that are growing up these days, and we need to set better examples even for our families and people in our communities because we are growing in obesity as um, a nation. And I'll save you guys a lot of reading here. Um, I'll give you some weight loss tips, but my first tip that I'm going to give you is I'm going to first ask, so in all the diet books or video is about diet and all the books that are out there, what is the one thing they have in common? So if you were to go buy 50 diet books, what's the one thing they have in common? And that is all diet books tell you to get rid of simple carbs and sugars and processed foods. And that is the number one tip for weight loss. If you get rid of simple carbs and sugars in your diet and you get rid of processed foods and trans fats, um, you're going to be healthy. That is the key to it. But we live in such a um, carbohydrate eating world that everywhere we go, we eat carbohydrates. But so weight loss tip number one is going to be remove simple carbs and simple sugars from our diet. And it's hard because we become addicted to these, these carbs and sugars. And they are addicting substances. And so you eat one, you want 100. Um, 
you deprive yourself of one for 15 minutes and you're craving it and you're going through sugar withdrawals and then you have a dozen when you you think, why well, I wasn't even hungry, why did I eat a dozen? It was because you had sugar withdrawal. So the key thing is we want to avoid these simple carbs and sugars. And in fact, about an hour and a half, two hours after, you know, say you have a dinner full of carbs and sugars like pasta and bread and, you know, some sugary drink, sweetened tea, let's say, you're going to have about an hour and a half, two hours after that, you're going to be taking a nap because your body cannot function with all simple carbs and sugars. It, it has to process that. Your liver processes all those carbs. It's an overload. And we become tired. Think about how many simple carbs and sugars that you've had today or even yesterday or even last night. These are found in breads, pastas, cereals. A lot of people think breakfast cereals are healthy. And if you look at the label on the breakfast cereal, they're loaded with carbohydrates and simple sugars. Um, toast. In fact, wheat bread will break down faster, yes, I said wheat bread, wheat bread will break down faster to sugar than a Snickers bar. Um, so we've got this crazy thing going in America, you know, where, you know, white bread, you know, breaks down to sugar, so have wheat bread. Well, wheat bread still breaks down to sugar. You know, it's almost like saying um, unfiltered cigarettes are bad, so smoke filtered, right? I mean, it's still going to break down to sugar. Your fruit drinks are going to break down to sugar. If you ever want a fruit drink, you're better off having the actual fruit. And you know, one of the scenarios that I always say is if someone gave you and I eight ounces of apple juice a day, or gave us eight ounces of apple juice and we were to drink it, we could probably smack it down in two or three big swallows, smack our lips, say, boy, it tasted good, but still be just as hungry. But if it took three apples to make that eight ounces of apple juice, could we sit here and eat three apples, one right after the other? We couldn't because we would get full, because in the apple you get the fiber and the bulk and the other nutrients from the apple, not just some antioxidants and, and some natural sugars. So we always say, if you want the fruit drink, have the fruit. Don't have the fruit drink. Um, and of course, cookies, cakes, and pies all break down to sugar. Um, bagels will break down to sugar. Popcorn breaks down to sugar. Ice cream breaks down to sugar. Chips break down to sugar. Um, and, you know, like we have this thing in America, too, where ice cream is bad, so have yogurt. Most yogurts is loaded with carbs and sugars. Um, there's only one yogurt that we recommend, and it's the non-fat plain Greek yogurt. So, and I would want you to buy it plain, and then you can add your own berries to it. The ones that have berries already in it are loaded with carbohydrates and sugars. So, again, it's all about getting rid of these simple carbs and sugars and to stop eating them. And I know it's very hard because... We're addicted, and after a couple of hours of not having them, we might have a headache, we might get weak and shaky, we might be craving something, and we just can't stop until we get that, part of that craving um, satisfied. But if I told you you could have all of the non-starchy vegetables that you could eat, all of it you wanted, so you could have all the red, green, yellow bell peppers, radishes, cucumber, celery, broccoli, cauliflower, green beans, zucchini, squash, you, you could have all that you wanted, salad with all that in it, um, and you told me that that wouldn't fill me up, I would say then you're, you're right, it's not going to take care of your sugar withdrawal. So part of the, the problems with being overweight and addicted to sugar is people don't want to go through sugar withdrawals. So they don't eat necessarily because they're hungry. They eat because they have a sugar withdrawal. Um, so we need to stop that, and we need to retrain our brain. When we see something like this, we don't need to think that, you know, oh, this is delicious, you know, because if I told you to go have 20 tablespoons of sugar, you would say, oh, that's yuck. But if I said to you, hey, I've got some bread in the back, put some cinnamon and some icing and sugar on there, it's mixing up, and you start to smell it, your brain starts to think, oh, I can't wait to get it. But really, we should be thinking, oh, that's, that's got me to the place that I don't want to be. It raises my sugar. It causes inflammation. I'll be tired and be unproductive in about an hour and a half, two hours after eating it. I mean, we really need to start thinking differently because this cinnamon roll is going to give you over 700 calories, 24 grams of total fat, 114 grams of total carbohydrates, um, just a huge amount. And for most people, we don't want people to go over 125 or 150 grams of carbohydrates per day. Um, so um, you're really, and this is so your whole day's worth of carbohydrates and more than enough of fat that you need, and half of your calories for the day is basically in that cinnamon roll. Um, so we really need to retrain our brains because in America our sugar, whoops, sorry, in America our sugar content just keeps rising. Um, we're off the charts, and in fact, um, that's 160 pounds per year per person in America. That was in 2000. 
So I am sure our sugar content is just even skyrocketed since then. And just to give you an example, so if you don't, if you're not drinking a soda today and you start to have a soda a day, or if you're already drinking a soda a day and you add a second soda a day, what you will do is you'll gain 17 pounds in a year just by adding that one soda a day. Um, you increase your risk for obesity by 60 percent, diabetes by 40 percent. And I'm not speaking about when you go to the restaurant and they, you order a, a soda and then they fill it up four or five times and they're super big glasses, right? So you got to think about that this is a treat that you might have every now and then, but really you need to retrain your brain to think that this is terrible for you. It's loaded with sugar, it decays your teeth, it's going to put weight on you, you're still going to be just as hungry after you eat it, there's no nutritional value in it, it's going to make you tired if you eat too much of it, and you're not going to be any good in an hour and a half, two hours later, you're going to be craving more sugar. Um, so we always, again, need to start thinking about retraining our brain. And think about how many sodas and carbohydrates and sugars you had even just yesterday or even this morning for breakfast. Because what that does is it raises your bad cholesterol, raises triglycerides, it raises your blood sugar, it causes insulin resistance, so it, it increases your risk for diabetes, it lowers your good cholesterol, which is your HDL cholesterol, and it increases your risk of abdominal obesity. Um, this next slide I'll show you is one of my patients um, this is their blood in, um, two, in, in the lab tubes that we draw. And when, can you see my pointer? So when you do, um, this is the first tube here, the, the blood starts here, and it actually goes all the way to the top. What you see here um, is the fat, the triglycerides um, of that person that came to the top in the blood tube. And this is the blood tube down here, but his, the person's blood starts here and it goes all the way to the top. You can see all this is the triglycerides and the fat. And you can even see it kind of as a torque. It's kind of twisted here. Um, and when you turn that upside down, it just kind of goes stock. It's, it's pretty solid in there. And then here's the blood tube from here to here with the triglycerides at the top. Um, so this person has a lot of carbs and sugars on board. And his arteries and his, and even the little arteries in his brain, um, because a lot of dementia can be from the same risk for cardiovascular disease because we have little arteries in our brain. They are craving antioxidants. They're craving foods from fruits and vegetables that have antioxidant and, uh, antioxidants in them. Um, they're craving healthy substances, not just fat, because that's what's sludging through their arteries and even the little brain arteries. So we really need to think differently about simple carbs and simple sugars in our diet and um, and uh, stay away from those and. and because the more you have, the more addicted that you will be. Um, the next tip is going to be to stop eating grains. Um, and I'm really excited um, that scientists have figured out kind of why people are staying addicted to grains. And that's really because the actual seed um, is not the same seed it used to be even in the 1930s. It's got 30% more carbohydrates in it. Um, when you eat grains, you're eating carbs and sugars. And like I said, a piece of wheat bread will break down quicker to sugar than a Snickers bar. Um, this is a great book by Dr. Davis. It's called Wheat Belly. And lose the wheat, lose the weight. Um, and he's got a second book out that also has some recipes in it. I think we will have a uh, free community forum open to the community on June 4th when Dr. Davis will be in town speaking as well as Dr. O'Keefe. Um, and with cardio tabs as well to be at the forum. Um, and it would be interesting. It would be great for the community to come here and speak. He's an excellent speaker. But um, if you want to learn more about how wheat increases your risk for abdominal fat, um, feel free to get his book. But not only when we eat those things does it increase our risk for abdominal fat, but it's, it's inflammation inducing, asthma inducing, arthritis inducing, allergy inducing. So when we get rid of the wheat and we get rid of some of these carbs and sugars, we're a lot healthy and we have a lot more healthier and then we have a lot more energy. Um, so think about how many wheat products you've had over the last um, 24 hours. The third tip for weight loss is to remove processed foods and trans fats from your diet. In fact, um, the processed foods and trans fats, um, Dr. O'Keefe and Joan O'Keefe will both say that those are some of the worst foods on the planet. And in fact, I do tell my patients the best thing about a donut is, is the middle, right? The hole in the middle. That's about the only thing that's healthy with a donut. 
but these foods that are baked goods such as cookies, crackers, um, donuts, pastries, croissants, often things that come in packages, chips and crackers, um, are loaded with bad fats that actually you know, raise your cholesterol. And here's some other ideas, of, and here's some ideas of saturated fats that raise your cholesterol. Cheeses and creams and marbled meats and ground beef and bacon and sausage. So we need to make sure that we um, are diligent about cutting back on these saturated fats in our diets and work on having lean protein and lean, um, uh, lean proteins in our diets. Um, when you see something like this, you need, I mean, we need again to retrain our brain. We need to say, instead of this as being, oh, I can't wait to have that, how lethargic you're going to be and how it's going to clog your arteries and how heavy that's going to be for you because these things will raise your bad cholesterol, will lower your good cholesterol, will increase your triglycerides, will cause arterial wall damage, so it will hurt your arteries, and it will lead to plaque buildup. Um, so we need to limit the bad and have more of the good. And in fact, when we eat things like this, it actually constricts our arteries, and it constricts them for a longer term than what they're made to made to be constricted. Um, I love this slide because this slide talks about our renin angiotensin system and we all have this system in our body and we have it in our body so that when we see this dog coming at us that we are able to stand up and fight it off or run like heck to get away from it. Not it, so, it, so we don't faint. So it constricts our blood vessels, it raises the blood pressure, restores our volume, gives us some vascular integrity to decide what the heck we're going to do to outlive the situation. But what we do when we eat those high saturated and trans fat meals, and like here's this quad stacker here, when you eat something like that, we have long-term activation of this renin angiotensin system. And that is not what we are made to do. We are made not to have this long-term activation of it. And when we do, it causes plaque, it causes increased volume, increased blood pressure, increased, increased clotting, and it hurts our artery wall. So we need to make sure that we don't do long-term activation of this, but we have um, that we have a short-term activation as it's supposed to be used for. This was a study here done by Dr. Vogel. Excellent. This is really excellent. This is your blood flow through. Um, this is the blood flow through the artery at baseline, and then four hours after your high-fat meal, look at your blood flow. It's not even half of what it was at baseline. And six hours later, you're not even back to baseline, and yet often many people are on to their next high-fat meal. So we really need to be conscientious about what we're eating and what it's doing to our arteries, even if that includes retraining our brain and thinking that these things are unhealthy, these are going to hurt me, going to re reduce my energy, make me lethargic, hurt my mood, hurt my arteries, and it really affects every part of your life. And one of the things I like to say is that if we were to bring a giraffe um, to the Kansas City Zoo um, and we wanted it to be healthy, live long, and play well with others, what would we do? We would put it in its natural habitat. We would give it what it's naturally designed to eat. We would put it in a natural habitat um, that it is genetically designed to be in. But if we took that draft to McDonald's and we gave it the foods and, Amer and Americanized it, it would have the same issues we have in America. Now we might be chuckling when we see this, but how many of you have seen dogs and cats that look like this? Um, so we're doing it to our pets as well. When we give them something that they're not genetically designed to eat, we're not helping them, we're hurting them. And that's what we're doing to ourselves as well. So we need to really think about if I'm not genetically designed to eat it, if I can't hunt and gather it, if it's not a lean protein or fruit and vegetable, I really shouldn't have it. If it's white, most things are white you shouldn't have, other than like cauliflower and some skim milk. But most things white you really shouldn't have. Um, and my tip number four is Avoid to drinking your calories. So, so many of us drink our calories, whether it's fruit juice or Gatorade or sodas. Many people will just, or margaritas, whatever it is, they'll drink their calories. And in fact, I have to be really careful when I ask patients, you know, what they have for breakfast. Is it a coffee or is it a milkshake? Because a lot of people will have milkshakes these days, and it's called a latte, but it's usually filled with sugar and, and carbohydrates. Um, so, yes, they contain calories. Yes. Many of them are loaded with sugar, and so you need to look at the nutritional value on that and what you're actually getting um, before you start ordering one of those every day because that can easily put on 17 pounds as well, just like a soda can. So the next question I get from my patients is, well, Becky, what should I drink? What is healthy? What, is, what am I able to drink? 
Um, and these are things that we recommend you drink. Water, tea, coffee. I mean, I think skim milk is healthy. Um, almond milk is also healthy if you wanted to do some almond milk. Low sodium DHA juice um, or vegetable juice. These are the things that we recommend that you drink. And of course, the coffee and tea is not sweetened. It's all natural. And tip number five is what should you eat? At every meal, when you look at your plate, you should have a lean protein and a fruit and vegetable. Um, let's see here. There we go. Um, so tip number five is that each meal, when you look down at your plate for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you should have a lean protein and at least two colors, fruits or vegetables. And the more color, the better. So what are ideas for lean proteins? Lean proteins are healthy nuts, such as, and they're tree nuts, walnuts, almonds, pecans, Brazil nuts, um, turkey, chicken, fish, those are lean meats. Even if you wanted red meat, meats that end in loins and rounds are um, also lean, leaner cuts of meat. Um, egg whites is a lean protein. All natural peanut butter. You can do whey protein. A lot of people will put some whey protein in their um, oatmeal if they're going to have oatmeal. Um, oatmeal in the morning. I'll talk a little bit about oatmeal. That's about the only cereal that I would say is okay, but even that's going to break down to sugar, so we don't recommend it more than two or three times per week. And if you do have it, you still need to put protein and color in it. Um, Non-fat cottage cheese is also a healthy protein. The non-fat plain Greek yogurt um, is another form of healthy protein. But so when you look at your plate, you should have a healthy protein in at least two colors. And you do need to avoid pastries and, and sugar, sugary foods. Um, a lot of people will say, well, so how much meat should I eat? And we actually carry that around with us. Um, basically, the size of the meat it should be the size of the palm of your hand. And the width of it is the second knuckle on your pinky. That should be the width of it. So for every meal, you know what you should have when you look at your plate. You should have a lean protein and, and at least two colors, fruits or vegetables. But also when you look at your plate, you need to rate your plate. Is it loaded with colors and do you have a lean protein with the colors? Because I think often people get stuck in a rut and eat the same colors and the same foods, but every color has a nutritional ingredient and value to it that your body needs. So it's best to get the whole rainbow of colors in throughout the day. Um, but if you're not going to do that, at least make sure you mix them up so you're not getting just the exact same colors every day because it's really important to you. And I do want to say one thing just about exercise because if I had a pill that told you, you know, that you, it helped you to lose weight, it would decrease your bad cholesterol, increase your good cholesterol, lower your blood pressure, give you self-esteem, prevent blood clots, prevent diabetes, reduce your heart rate, reduce or increase insulin sensitivity, if it did all those things, you know, people would just want to go out and get that pill right away. But actually, we all have access to it, and it is exercise. So even if you walk just 30 minutes a day or start out 10 or 15 minutes a day, the more activity, the more exercise you do, uh, the less risk for heart disease and the healthier you will be. And the big question is, and today, is can we change our lifestyle? Um, because it's important, because the way we're eating now, the whole world will be obese. Um, I just have a few questions. Um, so basically, what should you eat at each? What should each of your meals consist of? And if you are paying attention, you will know it's a protein in two colors. Um, and what? Approximately 25% of calories are consumed by Americans from what? Beverages, food, chocolate, or none of the above. 25% of calories consumed by Americans are actually from um, beverages. So again, we should not drink our calories. And here, out of this list, what is not a healthy protein? Egg whites, that's a healthy protein. Edamame, healthy protein. Natural peanut butter, healthy protein. Almonds, healthy protein. And barbecue wings. You're right, barbecue wings is not a healthy protein. Um, and next, I'll just do um, I'll just do one case study, and then um, we'll wrap it up here. But okay. Um, so here's a patient that came to me and had a latte from Starbucks with a cookie for breakfast, had salad with whole grain bread and a diet coke for lunch, and at 3 p.m. had a diet coke and M&Ms, and at dinner had spaghetti with meat sauce, two pieces of bread, and two glasses of wine. So is this person addicted to carbohydrates and sugars? 
Absolutely. Is this person going to be lethargic and tired during the day? Absolutely. You know, I have 20 and 30 year olds that I see that say, Becky, I'm just really exhausted. I'm like, really? You're 20 years old. You shouldn't be exhausted. And if you look at the diet, really, if they change their diet and come back and see me in three to four weeks, you know, and tell me if they don't feel better, you know, it's really all in the diet and their exercise. So if they would have protein and fruit and vegetables for breakfast instead of a latte loaded with sugar and a cookie, you know, in about two and a half hours, they're going to be tired looking for their next sugar. You know, so salad and whole grain bread, whole grain bread gave them sugar. Diet, diet drinks, artificial sweeteners just keep you addicted to carbs and sugars. And in fact, when diet drinks and artificial sweeteners came out, look at the world. Did we get smaller? No, we got bigger. So those, those things keep you addicted to carbs and sugars. They do not help you lose weight. So no wonder at 3 p.m. she needed a snack of M&Ms and a Diet Coke because she had a sugar withdrawal. And dinner, she needed more sugar. So that's where you get the pasta and the pieces of bread and the wine. Um, so we need to have lean proteins and fruits and vegetables at each of our meals. And I'm just going to skip through these two case studies. And I found this in a clinical advisor in March of 2008. And I thought this would just hit the, you know, hit the um, head of the nail right on. Be as lean as possible with a normal range of body weight. Be physically active as part of everyday life. Limit consumption of energy-dense foods and avoid sugary drinks. Eat foods of plant origin. Limit red meat and processed meat. Limit alcohol drinks limit consumption of salt, and aim to meet nutritional needs through diet alone. So don't take supplements, but get your fruits and vegetables and lean protein through your diet. And what I found was most interesting about this was the title of this article. And the title of the article was Dietary Strategies for Preventing Cancer. So some of the things that you learned today, hopefully will not only prevent yourself from having heart disease, but also prevent dementia and some cancers in your life. So the tips for weight loss today, um, basically are to remove simple sugars. There we go. Remove simple carbohydrates and simple sugars from your diet. Stop eating grains. Remove processed foods and trans fats from your diet. Avoid drinking your calories. And when you look at your plate for each meal, you should have a lean protein and at least two colors, fruits and vegetables. We do have a website um, that you can go to and you can download the top 12 tips um, to help you for permanent weight loss, and that's cardiowellnesscenter.org. Um, and I'll have that on here in just a second for you, but it is cardiowellnesscenter.org. It's at the bottom of this page um, for all the 12 tips for permanent weight loss. Um, but again, it's on our website under health resources. And I hope moving forward that we all eat for our health, you know, because if you eat for health, you're going you're gonna to develop a taste for it. So eat for your health because your life does depend on it. Um, and one of the supplements that I recommend a lot from CardioTab is the Cardio T because Cardio T actually naturally helps us. It naturally speeds up our metabolism, and that helps us get rid of some of our belly fat. So um, the Cardio T, it's two capsules a day. It also lowers your bad cholesterol. Um, I've seen that in some of my patients, so it's done really well. If you're looking for a supplement to help you, um, you still need to make diet and lifestyle changes, but if you are looking for a supplement that helps to naturally speed up your, your um, metabolism that's healthy for you, I would recommend um, the Cardio T. And if you've, since listening to this uh, webinar, uh, Cardio Taps has given a 15% off the Cardio T if you use the word code, if you use the code 15T. Um, and thank you all for having me. Thanks, Becky. Uh, you've gone over, uh, I appreciate you, you going past the, the a lot of time limits, so we won't be able to uh, have any questions. For those who did submit questions throughout the webinar, we will try to answer them on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Thanks again for attending. There will be a um, recording of the webinar available sent out tomorrow, and this promotion code for Cardio T will last for um, until the end of the weekend. So hopefully everyone enjoyed it. And thank you for listening.